Next guest will be meeting with the Vice Premier of China in early October to resume trade talks. And joining us tonight, we're pleased to say, the Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin. Great to have you with us, Mr. Great Secretary. Great to be here with you. Thank you. Hey, let's start with uh, China uh, and, and the United States and where we are in the negotiations, uh, if they can still be called that. Well, I think, you know, Ambassador Lighthizer and I have been at this now for a while under the mm -hmm. president's direction. And the president has been very clear. If we can get the right deal, he wants to do a deal. If we can't get the right deal, he's happy with the tariffs. And the, and the Chinese position does not seem to have migrated toward uh, a, 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 anything approaching uh, and into the theft of hundreds of billions of dollars in intellectual property and technology uh, to uh, balance trade as a, as a precept of any uh, agreement. Well, from our, our first meeting with President Trump and President Xi, President Xi agreed that rebalancing the trade deficit was a priority. Uh, we've been working two years for that, and you're right. It's gone in the other direction. So the president is determined that we have to have a fair and reciprocal relationship with trade, and it, it's been a one-way street. It, it, is, it has been a one-way street uh, since the beginning of the Chinese adventure, if you will, has it not? Uh, and to think that right now uh, agriculture uh, is going to be the number one export of the United States, the world's only superpower, the most advanced economy. And my God, we're, we're locked up around soybeans uh, and, and agriculture. It's just a, a, an extraordinary to me as, a, as an outsider looking in. It's extraordinary that that would be uh, our, our first uh, move forward. Well, it's, it's not that agriculture is the most important issue. Mm -hmm. The most important issue, as you said, is, is the intellectual property. But uh, the farmers and the fishermen are very important to the president. They think it ought to be a priority. And, right? and I would say that, you know, we take it as a personal offense that yeah. they stopped buying agriculture. Now, the good news is the yeah. Chinese have agreed and they've started buying again. Right. So that, that's, that's the good news. It's a sign of good gesture that they're back at the table buying agriculture. And those are important people who have supported the president. So uh, I've oh, become a soybean salesman. Well, I, you know, I'm a soybean consumer like uh, nearly everyone in this country. Uh, and, and I appreciate that. I, I do find it a, a little difficult to understand uh, why China is so reticent to acknowledge at least the fundamental precepts. And I know that you uh, and, and Trade Representative Lighthizer have been absolutely fantastic in your negotiations. The president has, I, I think, been brilliant. For example, talking about agriculture, he's moved back to uh, significant billions of dollars. What is it, about $26 billion to the farmers uh, out of that uh, almost, well, now more than $70 billion in tariffs. I mean, that's an extraordinary uh, uh, to me, an uh, uh, in innovative uh, way in which to deal uh, with the, the problems in agriculture. I agree with you. And the president was determined to make sure that the farmers were not collateral damage right. uh, in, in, in these discussions. But the good news is I, I, I think there, there is a desire for China to move forward with these reforms. Uh, they have their own issues internally, I think they're focused on. And we have a good framework of an agreement. We'll see if we can move forward with that. And uh, we mentioned that Sheldon Adelson uh, was, was telling, apparently, according to the reporting of the Wall Street Journal, uh, that, uh, you know, that he didn't think it was such a great idea to proceed with tariffs uh, and to disrupt the relationship. Uh, but understandably, uh, his, most of his revenue comes from Macau. Uh, it is a hotbed of gambling uh, enterprise, uh, but again, it, it's not a, it's not a, you, you just would expect there to be less vested interest in the council, uh, given the president. Well, I've known Sheldon for over 20 years, and mm -hmm. he's really a, a great business person. And no doubt. He, he's, he's been a great supporter of the president uh, during no the campaign when other people weren't stepping up. Sheldon was stepping up. So I do think he has the right intentions. I mean, as you said, he does have interests there. But I think one of the, the issues is he, he has pretty good perception from having done business in China. And that, that's really his counsel. But Sheldon wants to see the right outcome here. He understands the issues of intellectual property. And this is the first president that's confronted these issues. It, it is stunning 
when we think about the chronic uh, year after year uh, trade deficits with China. And Wall Street arguing that there's, uh, it is not a zero-sum game, that there is no effect on economic growth, even though we know that does affect national savings, and it does, in fact, reduce the rate of economic growth in this country. Uh, this president and, and you and, and Lighthizer have stood up against uh, the Chinese. And I, I have to say, probably they spent the first year just trying to get over their shock that an American government would say, no, well, you can't loot, pillage, and plunder us any longer. Well, as you know, the president not only likes tariffs, but he uses <laughs> them strategically. Absolutely. And he, he's right. If it weren't for the tariffs, nobody would be at the table negotiating. So this is really an important tool in rebalancing this relationship. And talks will be underway shortly. To do just that, we're going to continue our conversation with the Treasury Secretary, Stephen Mnuchin, right after these very quick words. Please stay with us.